Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. What we want to do today is talk about the S Waver. Uh, ever since we shot the, the S Waver 200 video, catching fish on the bait, we've taken a lot of questions about how we actually fish the baits. Uh, the gear we use, the retrieves we use, all those things. That video was geared more towards catching fish rather than giving you an explanation. So a lot of people wanted to know how to fish the baits. So we're gonna talk about the two baits that we use. We use the 168 and the 200. So first rod is for the 168. Uh, we use some different gear, Tim and I. For me, I use a 764 power, Dobbin 764C. That's the rod that I like. Uh, it's a, a medium heavy rod. It's got a very strong backbone, but has some tip. And it's seven to one reel. 65 or 50 pound braid and then I use a light leader or really you could use lighter braid you could use 30 pound braid uh, I use a, a 15 pound leader uh, generally mono for the stretch if I think that I'm fishing for smaller fish I'll go all the way up to a 20 pound leader if I'm fishing murky water or if I think I'm fishing for really big fish um, either way you still get great action out of the bait so that 764 again Fairly strong backbone, softer tip, and uh, what I found for me, again, everybody's different, but for me, the way that I fish, if I use too soft of a rod, once I bury those hooks and I'm grinding on that fish, if my rod is too soft, I just shake those fish off. The way that I fish, coming from more of a traditional swim bait background, I horse them pretty hard, so I like that little bit stouter rod so I can really grind on them. I know you're a little bit different. What do you use? Yeah, I uh, completely disagree. You know, I look at a bait like this with treble hooks, I look at it as more of a topwater saw bait. You know, I use a rod with a little lighter tip. Um, I first started out throwing the Dobbins 734. It's still a four power rod, it's a little bit shorter. I actually like the shorter rod. Um, when, you're, when you're throwing this style of bait and you get a follower, um, I like to be able to, to twitch the rod and, and get the bait to do some cool stuff to get the fish to commit. So that's why I like the shorter rod. But lately I've been playing around with the 764 um, cranking rod. It's still the same size, same power, but it's got a moderate fast action. So when you do get bit and you do set the hook, I don't grind the fish in like he does. I, I play the fish just like uh, any other treble hook bait, you know, top water bait, something like that. So because he likes spinning rods, play the fish. Yeah, um, you know, both, both uh, we've both put giant fish in the boat. Um, this seems to work uh, better for the spots for me. You know, we're talking about throwing this bait. We throw it for large with that spots. For me, the 734 worked great, and now I'm playing with the, with the 764, and it's it's awesome too. So, as far as reel, I throw a 71, 71 reel. I throw a 30 pound braid to 15 pound leader. If I if I fish in clear water lakes, or I think the fish are line shy, I'll switch to straight 15 pound fluoro. And you guys will have to play around with that. You know, if you have a mono leader or a floral leader, it kind of changes the action of the bait, so. It totally um, does. That floral leader, you get like two more feet. On a typical cast, that bait's coming in like a solid two feet lower in the water column than it does on mono. Yeah, mono floats and floral sinks. Another key thing, I don't know that Matt and I have talked about, when you're, you, you really have to pay attention when you're fishing these style baits. Make sure you're wearing your polarized sunglasses because nine times out of 10, you'll have a follower and you don't even know it. You know, right. I, you know, I, when I first started throwing the style of bait, you'd, you'd reel your lure up to the boat and you'd have two or, fish, two or three fish following it and you wouldn't even know. So you gotta pay, pay attention 100% of the time and make sure you're wearing good polarized sunglasses. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Why don't you talk about the 200? All right, the 200, uh, I throw it, we throw it actually on the same rod. It's the 806 uh, swim bait rod. Reel, I throw the Revo Toro. It's a it's a low profile reel, but it's a bigger line, bigger spool, a bigger line capacity. So you can throw your bigger braid. Uh, we, th if we're fishing murky water, I'll throw 80 pound braid, 65 pound braid to a 20 to 30 pound liter. Uh, if I'm fishing clear water, line shy, finicky fish, I'll throw straight 15 or 17 pound fluoro. Um, what do you throw? You're crazy. 15 yeah. to 17 pound fluoro. Again, I don't horse the fish. You know, when he sticks a fish, he's grinding them to the boat. Uh, treble hooks, I'm, I'm always afraid of the fish, you know, spitting them or, you know, ripping them out, so. Right, and the important thing is, I mean, we really do. We fish as a team. We're both out here catching fish, and we are doing it very, very differently. He's going slow. I'm yelling at him to get the fish in the net. I'm grinding my fish. He's yelling at me to not bend out hooks. 
two very different approaches, but they match our styles and we're both very effective. If either one of us tries to use the other one's gear, it's a nightmare. He's bending hooks, I've got fish jumping, fish coming off, it just doesn't work. So you really have to dial in the gear for your style. Uh, for me, again, same thing, 806, uh, 806H, eight foot, six power rod. Now you can see mine is old. I mean, it's like the first generation of the 806. And that's actually, for me, that's for a very specific reason. It's because I've worn this rod out so much. This rod is like a giant crankbait rod. I mean, it's just a noodle. Uh, and any rod is gonna do that over a lot of time. But the 806 as a whole, even the brand new ones are a very flexible rod. It's in my mind with these baits, it's a giant crankbait rod more than a swim bait rod. And what that allows me to do, even though I'm horsing on them, you've still got a lot of bow in that rod and when the fish are trying to shake, they can't totally unload it. The rod is still absorbing those head shakes, keeps those fish pinned really, really well. Uh, I also use braid, 65 or 80. I always tie to 30 for the, for the 200, uh, just personal preference. Uh, with a bait that size, I really don't think, most of the time anyway, that the fish are paying attention to the line at all. They see that bait, they track that bait. Uh, so I go to a heavier line just to eliminate a potential problem. Where we differ is I use Calcutta's. Uh, 300, 400, depending on circumstances. But the reason why I do that, again, coming from that swim bait background, uh, I, all, I basically grew up throwing big round style reels and they're just very comfortable for me. Uh, it's a really good grip in the hand when I'm working with a big bait. Tim prefers that lower profile. Yeah, it's quite um, a bit. Quite yeah, completely different. So this is more your traditional bait cast reel. It, it feels more comfortable in my hands. So go to your, you know, go to your tackle shop and, and put them in your hand and see what you like. Yeah, try both. Um, again, they are slower retrieve with the bigger bait. It's like a five, four to one, something like that. Some sort of five to one. Yeah, this is five, four to one. And this yeah. is the Toro 50, not the 60. The 60 is too big, the 50 is perfect. perfect. The five, four to one. So both using a little bit slower retrieve because that 200, obviously it's a, a bigger bait. The joint isn't quite as tight. So it's got a slower, more methodical action. So everything we do with that bait is slower. Whereas the 200 is a, a tighter joint, tighter movements. 168. So, oh, excuse me, 168. Tighter joint, tighter movements. So we're fishing that bait faster. We're both using a seven to one on that one. You can so, see there's quite a bit size difference in the two sizes. Yeah, yeah, way different. So I think what we'll do now, uh, we both use the exact same retrieves with these baits. So I'll just show you the retrieves that we use, uh, break down the way that we fish it, what we're doing with the reel, what we're doing with the rod, and we'll uh, we'll walk you through the rest of that. Yeah, there's uh, there's there's a little bit of perfection needed to get those followers to commit. You know, it's it's. We, at first we struggled with seeing the fish fall in the bait and uh, you know a lot of the comments and questions we get is people they they get followers but they can't get the fish to commit so uh, Matt kind of dialed it in and he's gonna show you what we do to uh, get those followers to actually commit yeah let's do it all right I'm gonna break down these retrieves for you there's basically four different kinds of retrieves that we use and you just have to play with them to see what the fish are eating on a given day or during a given season First retrieve, throw that bait out there, and you just start a slow crawl. And I mean slow. You want to go as slow as you can and still have the bait swimming. You'll, you'll get too slow, and that bait will all of a sudden it'll lose its action. It'll just go straight through the water. Speed up a little bit until it starts to get that slow crawl. And that's it. You're just going to crawl that bait back to the boat. This generally works its best when the water is cold or when the fish are really dormant. Uh, it'll work, you know, post frontal when the fish are really shut down. That's generally when we're going to do this retrieve, but it's very simple. Obviously anybody can do this and it does catch them. Um, some of the biggest fish I've seen caught on a waiver are caught this way. Throw that guy back out there. Now the second retrieve is very, very erratic. This one, we're gonna work the bait and then we're gonna rip it, but we're gonna, and rather than like a sharp snap, we're gonna really pull the bait. And what that does is the bait, and I'll go ahead and do it. Oh, I caught up a little grass out there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, sweep the rod. 
reel up the slack, and repeat. Now what that's doing, you throw that bait out there, it starts swimming, it's a pretty quick swim. So it's gonna do six swims, and then it's gonna speed up and then drift out to one side or drift out to the other side. If a fish is behind that bait, they're starting to track that bait, they think they have the upper hand, then that bait takes off. So the fish is gonna speed up with it. When that bait sweeps out and dies, that's when they're gonna eat it. One of two things is gonna happen. They're either gonna crush it or they're gonna completely bail off. And either one is okay. If they bail off, that fish was never going to bite. So you can just get on to your next cast. The third retrieve is the one that has the most variance. What we're gonna do is we're gonna combine that slow crawl with really working the bait, putting a little action into it. So I'll throw it out there, crawl it along with say four handle turns, two twitches, four handle turns, two twitches. So that bait's just creeping along and then it goes and then comes back to normal. That is just a deadly, deadly retrieve. Now I said four handle turns. That's what I'll use if I'm right up in cover. Say I'm throwing along a dock or along a boat or I know that there's something in the water, there's a buoy, whatever it may be. Those four handle turns, the fish generally come up on it while the bait's going slow, but they eat it when it moves. And you'll see that. Uh, you can really, when you see fish coming up on the bait, it works really well to get them too. But again, four handle turns is if I'm right on cover. Say I'm out here, we've just got this giant weed flat right here. Then I'm gonna throw it out. I'll go as much as 10 or 12 handle turns before I twitch it. And the reason for that is because again, the fish follow it when it's going slow. They don't follow it when I'm twitching it. So I need as much time on a big flat like this to let the fish come to the bait as I can get. If I'm right in cover, going down a wall where I know the fish are there, I don't need time for them to get to it. They're already looking at the bait. So I can do that twitch and try and get them to eat it. The last retrieve, by far the most erratic, this works when the fish are aggressively eating bait or if they're eating top water, if they're chasing a spook, this will work. You throw that bait out there and you're gonna walk it just like you would a top water. Walk in the dog, twitch the rod, twitch the reel, your speed varies. You can walk it really fast, right under the surface with little twitches. Now again, we're talking about the S waiver, but all four of these retrieves, these are glide bait retrieves. These can be done with an S waiver. These can be done with a gain craft. You could do it with a slide swimmer. You could throw a mother. All those baits can be thrown with these four retrieves and be just absolutely deadly. So hopefully that gives you guys some insight. It is definitely glide bait season right now. We're going into fall. Fish are eating these baits. We know that when we shot that initial video, we really didn't break it down for you. That wasn't what that video was about. But now you've got all the tools that you need so that you can go out there and replicate what we're doing to actually get those followers to commit to that bait. Good luck out there.